Monster War, y'all. Welcome back to Kenny for real. I didn't expect to upload a video today. I'm going to be honest with you. I just uploaded one 12 hours ago talking about how stressed we were as fans. And, and two of the teams that we talked about being stressed made a deal today. Yeah, we're talking about Larry Markin. He was one of the last big. I, I always put that in quotation marks because I Larry, is Larry Markin a big name free agent? In the class of 2021, maybe. He's one of the last big free agent dominoes to fall. Um, a lot of Bulls fans... Knew that this day was coming, but we weren't 1,000% sure, especially when you look at what's going on with the 76ers where they said they're willing to bring Ben Simmons back. And I was just so afraid that the, the perfect trade or the right trade wouldn't come around for the Bulls so they'd be willing to bring Larry Marketing back, even though he said to the media, I want more money, I want to be a starter, I want a new look on a different team. Basically, the stuff that Ben Simmons camps are talking about. You know what I'm saying? So I was a little afraid as we slowly get closer and closer to camp that Laurie Marketing might have been on my team. And I'm happy that he's not. And I don't mean that in like a negative term. I don't mean that I hate Laurie Marketing or I don't think he's a solid basketball player. I legitimately just think, like I said with some of the other videos we've uploaded recently, the relationship had run its course and it was time for Player X to get a new organization. And it happened. Starting off with Woes, he came out with a tweet. Cleveland is acquiring Chicago's restricted free agent Larry Marketing on a four-year, $67 million deal on a signing trade. Now, I'll be honest with you. When this broke, I was in the shower. <laughs> I was in the shower, and I was like, yo. All right, now, the Cavaliers and the Bulls, they've been rumored that they've been talking for the last couple days, and that kind of left Bulls fans loving the idea of uh, Larry Nance Jr. ending up in Chicago. Unfortunately, it didn't end up that way, but I was super excited. When I saw Cleveland, I was like, oh, Larry Nance is coming to Chicago. Let's go. Get it. So it, for the next two to three minutes, um, while I was in the shower, I was just refreshing my phone. And then we finally got the full extent of the trade. And it turned out to be more than just a two-teamer. We got a three-team deal that landed the Bulls. Derrick Jones Jr., a lottery protected first rounder from Portland, a 2023 second rounder that is from Denver. And then the Cavs get Laurie Marketing, and the Trailblazers get Larry Nance Jr. So no, the Bulls did not get the Larry Nance Jr. piece that I wanted, but I am... Super happy about this trade, but we're going to talk about that. I want to start off with the bigger name, the biggest name associated in this trade. And it is Laurie Marketing, considering it started off as the Laurie Marketing signing trade. So let's talk about Cleveland's offseason or Cleveland's moves because I am still trying to wrap my head around it as I record this. This trade happened um, about 30, 40 minutes ago, and maybe it'll start to make more sense as time goes on. But at the moment, I'm like, bro, what is happening? A ton of front court players, and not even just a ton of front court players, a ton of front court money tied in. Now, I think it just came out that Larry Marketing's deal is looks a little bit different than 467, where there's like some incentive. So technically, it's like four years and less money, yada yada. But you still, you pay, you pay Jared Allen one a lot of money, like a hundred million dollars to be your starting center. Makes a lot of sense. You drafted the best guy that was available on the board, and Evan Mobley, who is a four slash five. I don't know much about college players. Some people say he can run the four. Some people say he can't. I don't know. We'll find out soon. You still have Kevin Love wrapped up to to a deal. I don't know what happened with Kevin Love. And then you bring in Laurie Marketing, who should be coming off the bench to start the season. I mean, let's be honest. You don't you don't draft Evan Mobley at number three to have him come off the bench. So instead. You're paying this guy about $15, $18 million a year, depending on how this deal is structured, to come off the bench at a position that is competing with two of your younger players that you want to develop. It feels a bit weird. Now, I say that, and then I realize that Laurie Marketing's ceiling is higher than Larry Nance's. Larry Nance is a better player right now, and that is 100% sure, like true, but I do believe that Laurie Marketing's ceiling hasn't been reached just yet. I do believe that the last couple years, for the Chicago Bulls, we, we didn't get a full grasp of what Laurie Marketing could be. Will he ever get to the point that me and me and some Bulls fans still believe he could get to? Maybe not. Maybe he does. So I understand getting a younger player to fit the timeline a little bit better. But this is this is a, a basketball fan that's not in the, the city of Cleveland. It felt like Larry Nance was the team. It felt like Larry Nance was the heart. It felt like Larry Nance embodied what the Cleveland Cavaliers really are. And I, technically, I think he's like a hometown kid, right? Um, because his father, of course, played for the Cavaliers. And he was doing these things where he was wearing shirts and clothing brands of like local businesses. He was just doing everything for the city of Cleveland. So it feels weird to ship him off when he was the better player on a better deal. But again, we could look back on this trade in two years and be like, oh, Laurie Marketing, that four-year, 60-something million ain't that bad because he might end up being better. But now he's competing with five other players for his minutes. Laurie Marketing came out and said, I want the bag. 
I would classify this a, as a bag for Laurie Marketing. He came out and said he wanted to change the scenery. Cleveland is dramatically different than Chicago. But he also said he wanted to be a starter. And there's a, there's a fly. I don't think he's going into Cleveland as a starter. And if he is at the moment, you can't tell me that Mobley won't end up taking that spot. You didn't pay Jared Allen to come off the bench. And I saw some people thinking, Laurie Marketing going to run some three for them. Oh, <laughs> let me tell you something about Laurie Marketing. You don't want that man running the three. We tried that. Oh, best believe we tried that a little bit, and it was it was terrible. He doesn't have the lateral quickness. He does, doesn't have the defensive upside to guard threes. He basically don't really have that much of a defensive upside to guard fours around the league. You want him to slide over to the three? It's not happening. Or if it does happen, it's not going to be a successful trip. So this definitely feels very weird for them. Um, I don't know about the individual players in the Cleveland Cavalier locker room, but I, I do believe that Cavalier fans loved Larry Nance Jr. And let's talk about Larry Nance Jr. Secondly, because I love this deal for the Portland Trailblazers. We gave up a guy and Derrick Jones Jr. who wasn't playing for us. The guy back Larry Nance Jr. We giving up a, a lottery protect the first round pick. And if Damian Lillard is staying there for the entirety of the season, they're going to be a playoff team. <laughs> they're going to be a playoff team. So maybe that pick is what, 20th? Last year, I think they had the 23rd pick. And that was when Nurkic was injured. That was when CJ broke his, his ankle. You know, I, I've, we talked about a couple days ago, we were talking about the Portland Trailblazers. They're, they're a good team. They're a playoff team. And they're going to be a playoff team as long as Damian Lillard is, is healthy. And this raises, I believe that Larry Nance Jr. is one of those role players that raise the floor of your organization, raise the floor of a good team. The man was like leading the league in steals for like the first couple months of the season off the bench. Leading the league in deflections off the bench. You know, he is a guy that will instantly come in and steal some minutes away. And they need that type of player. Um, the last couple of years, they've added Robert Covington, who has a great defensive upside or great defensive player. And now Larry Nance Jr. And that's coming from a team that was like number three when it comes to the worst defenses in the league. Larry Nance Jr. helps that out um, a lot. So I love this deal. Yeah, you gave up a first round pick, but if you're trying to keep Damian Lillard healthy and you're trying to put together a great team around Damian Lillard, which it seems like Neil O'Shea and the team is trying to do, who cares about that pick? You gave up two first round picks to get Robert Covington anyway. Who cares? And it is lottery protected. So if hypothetically Dave walks into the office tomorrow and said, this is it. That's all for me. Hey, that pick we can tank and we can still get a lottery pick. So I love this deal for the Portland Trailblazers. Larry Nance Jr. is a really good player. And I think since he was in Cleveland, not a lot of people really realize that. And once he's playing on national TV or is playing in playoff series, a lot of people realize that Larry Nance Jr. is really, really solid. Now let's talk about my Bulls. You see, I, I saved them for last. So people can't say, oh my God, Kenny is a homer. He only wants to talk about the Bulls. But... The Bulls got a first-round pick. Got a good role player in Derrick Jones Jr. who will legit legitimately get minutes on this team. Maybe he didn't get a lot of minutes in Portland, but he will get minutes here on this team. And a second-round pick for a guy that everybody knew was probably done in Chicago. For a guy that we didn't even want, which is really solid. I think one of the major criticisms for this Bulls offseason or this Bulls front office in general when you include the Nikola Vucevic trade too is that they gave up um, three first-round picks to get a okay slash good team and now we get one back so does that soften the blow a little bit do you look at the bulls front office a little bit different now that we added a lottery protected pick even though the picks that we traded away might be outside the lottery i don't really know again i would have loved larry Nance jr but i like the idea of getting back a first round pick in exchange for a player that we did not want Derek jones jr i talked to him um, on a series that his episode might be dropping on YouTube in a couple days. So go to the Through through the Wire YouTube channel. Go subscribe because me and Derrick Jones Jr. talk. This is maybe, this is maybe in January, February. He's still in Portland and they were, you know, still doing this thing. And he was just saying like the, the way he went from the G League to being an NBA player to getting like a, a long-term NBA contract was on the defensive side of the ball. He really valued defensive possessions like no other. And, of course, he's one of the bounciest players in the league. It's going to be fun to see him try to jump over people and do crazy dunks. Um, I think we need his defense more than his highlight ability, and that would be really solid. So I, I'm loving the Bulls, man. I, what can I say? How, how can I not be excited about this Bulls season? If anything, it's just different, and different is good when you compare it to what we had for the past five years. So, yeah, initial grades. Just initial grades. We can come back to this trade in three years and regrade it. I think the Bulls walk out of here with like an A. First round pick. Good role player. Second round pick. Um, the Portland Trailblazers walk out of here with an A. Good role player for a player that wasn't playing for you and a pick that you don't really care about. 
For the Cavaliers, I'm giving it like a C, maybe C plus. At, as initially, we got to see what version of Larry Marketing y'all really get. Because I remember his sophomore season, he averaged 25 points in the month of February. I ain't forgot about that. I don't know if that Larry Marketing is still alive somewhere deep down in there, but it might come out. Even though he's competing with four other players. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. You let me know what you think in the comment section about this trade. Those are my initial thoughts. Go watch the video from last night if you missed it. I think it was one of the more fun videos. It's not news related, but it is super fun. Oh, and it relates to this video in more ways than one. So go check that out.